God's done with us. We were meant to have a big five-year celebration earlier in the year, but guess what happened? COVID. And so we did a great little video, which we'll show you today. It's a bit out of date. I say happy birthday on the video, but it gives us a little bit of history of us as a church. If you're a guest today and you're looking in at Redeemer, welcome. We trust that God has uh, sovereignly brought you here. And maybe this will be a day when you think, okay, this is something God's knitting my heart into. And if you're just a visitor and you're a guest coming through, you're so welcome. It's slightly unusual today. We'll have a little bit of a look at God's words, um, but hopefully you'll be encouraged either way. Um, and the, the prayer that I've just shared and the news we've just shared is actually a vital part of being a church family. Because I think in scripture, the most common description of the church really is as a family. Jesus taught us to pray to our Father. And so church is never attendance at an event. Um, you know, I think if you're looking in a church, obviously you come along. Sunday is just a small expression of what the church is. The church is to be a family. And so there are moments like that where we mourn with each other. And there's moments we rejoice. And Sunday, last Sunday was one of those. Um, so I just, I, I'm going to ask you to do something. If you don't want to stand up or lift your hand, that's absolutely fine. Not to worry, but just to show how much things have changed in church life, I'm going to ask people to stand up or lift your hand, depending on how long you've been around in the life of Redeemer. Um, if you don't know, in short, in 2015, my wife and I moved up to Colchester, felt God call us. We started in our living room, meeting together, and were quickly joined, and others moved up to join us. And um, that's what it's led to today. God's been wonderfully kind to us. Um, and so if you've been here for five plus years, part of Redeemer, if you've been here for five plus years, there will be the categories on the slide that comes up. You, so that would be if you arrived in about late 2016 and you were with us for the first few months of that glorious venue, you can see in the bottom left corner, that was our first venue, there were no lights, it was red velvet, uh, and, um, but God was there. <laughs> If you were there in those days, could you stand up quickly, please? In the very few months of Redeemer life. Fantastic. And there are some people who are out serving in kids and youth. So, a lot has changed. Please take your seats. If you've been part of Redeemer for about three to five years, so late 2016, before we were in this venue, so if you arrived before we were in this venue, you haven't stood up, could you stand up, please? Anyone? Graham, over there. Joel and Lucy. Anyone else? That's it. Look at that. Okay, thank you, folks. If you've been here one to three years, so basically your history with Redeemer has been COVID, um, <laughs> or just before, so you've been in this school, or you've just experienced us online, but it's more than a year, could you stand? Or wave your hands if that's more comfortable. Look at that. Wow, great. Grab your seats. <laughs> And if you've been here uh, less than a year, can you stand up or wave your hands, however you feel most, uh, including today, if you want. Great. Welcome. Please grab your seats. So you could either think people don't hang around this church for very long and they get going quickly. I think by God's grace that's not the case. We've had lots of genuine reasons people have moved on. And uh, we've had quite a few students who have moved on. And I think we've sent or said goodbye for job changes or other good reasons. Probably about 60 people at least who have come through. So I think it's quite important we, we just have a touch base because most of us probably don't even know each other's names. And so in a few moments um, we're going to watch a video. It's about 10 minutes that's going to tell our story so far. Um, some of you will feature in it, which will be great. But first off, I just want you to turn to someone who maybe doesn't know you so well, no pressure, don't have to move around, and just say, what brought you to Redeemer? Or how did you end up here? Okay, your answer might be, my neighbor wrangled me into coming and I said yes. Um, or you might say, I looked it up on the web or something. So just take a few moments, chat. Or you might just say, I'm visiting, because I know some people. Just take a moment to chat to someone around you and tell them how you've ended up there. Redeemer. If you are part of the church, please turn around to someone who you don't recognize. I mean, it might be you. And be proactive. Don't speak to them.
Others of you, situations forced you down. You think, what's going on? And you stumbled across us. Some of you heard us singing when we met outside in the summer and you brought your children in. Others of you have found us online in a variety of ways. And so there's such a variety. If you are part of us, we just want to share a little bit of the heart. And if you are, have been around for a while, you would have heard this. It would be good to hear it again. Um, so really, if you want to talk about a mission or a vision statement for us, Really, a verse that kind of sums up the heartbeat of what we're about, or a portion of scripture, is in John chapter 10, where Jesus talks about being a good shepherd. And particularly this verse, in John chapter 10, verse 10, where Jesus says that the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. We all have a story of life being stolen, haven't we? Stuff in us that's been... But Jesus said, I have come that you might have life, and have it to the full. Um, that would be my story apart from Jesus. I would probably be a third generation alcoholic from a broken family, but hallelujah, praise the one who made himself known to me. I don't, know, I don't know what your story would be apart from that. Maybe you're trying to work it out now. And so as a result of that, what we would call our mission and our vision statement, if you like those things, I, I think every church's mission and vision statement is just a rewording of what the Bible calls us to. Uh, but our mission is what we give ourselves to every day and our vision is what we're trusting God for which would be a combination of scripture and prophetic words. So our, our mission is that we exist to lead people to discover fullness of life by helping them find and follow Jesus. Nothing new, it's just the Bible, but it's our heartbeat. So whatever situation you find yourself in in your life today, I hope you're not just coming to attend church. Our hearts that you encounter Jesus and that there's a life that's birthed in your heart. And fullness of life doesn't mean comfort if you're a Christian. Okay? It can mean comfort, but we follow a crucified Messiah. There's a little clue in the that. In this world you will have trouble, but I will give you my peace, Jesus said. We don't go looking for trouble, and generally in the West, as Christians, it's pretty comfortable on the whole where we are. The fullness of life, this is a deep, vibrant, for Ryan and Ruth right now today, Life-giving, comforting well of life. Can you say life? That's what Christ has for you. And that's what we're about. That's why we preach Jesus. It's why we honor Christ. It's why we gather together. Why people sacrifice time and energy and resource so that more people can come to know Jesus. And then if you like our vision, again, it's a biblical vision. It's we want to be a growing local church because the best size for any church is bigger. Even if it's one more person, because it's about seeing people saved, it's not about the numbers, it's about the stories of lives. So to be a growing local church with a global reach, God's done that. There are, I mean, look at the flags, this is deliberate. If you're part of this church and your flag's not here, please get one and bring it on a Sunday. Whose flag is not up here? Well, I mean, we've got other flags, but you know. So we need to get a Costa Rican flag, we need to get a Colombian flag, and, and many others. We need to get a Malawian flag. Any others that we need to get? Argentina, Botswana, there you go. Anywhere else? Nigeria. Nigeria. England, we do have one somewhere. Good shout. We do love England. Um, I didn't put my Zimbabwe flag up today. It's because I'm actually English now. But yeah. anyway. um, Greece and other places, Cyprus. We've got lots to do. Anyway, we, we want to be a great church with a good... A global reach, multiplying and strengthening churches. So it's not just about us and our name. If we can bless anyone, we can. It's been a thrill to serve a little church in Brightling Sea over the last year and a half called Oasis. We folks go and preach there and lead worship there. It's a privilege just to serve and bless. They're not in our network or anything. We want to raise leaders, release missionaries and resource pioneering because I like alliteration. But that sums up um, what we're about. So if you are part of Redeemer, this isn't something that the leaders... Just believe in. This is something that we trust that God knits your heart into. And then no matter how small you feel your role is that you play, whether it's encouraging a person next to you on a Sunday and saying hi, so that they actually come again and meet Jesus, or whatever it might be, 
That's a vital part of what you are playing. So that's kind of a big picture of where we're going. We're going to watch a video now. So get comfortable, it's 10 minutes or so. And it just tells a little bit of the story of where we've come from. Matt's on the lights. So um, I'm just going to pray before we roll the video. Lord, I, I want to ask you that as we share our story, that you'll just give you glory, Lord, to think where we've come from. <laughs> Living rooms and... Uh, Windowless little bunker rooms, Lord. You've done a great thing. But most of all, you've changed lives, Lord. And we honor you. Amen. Happy birthday, Redeemer. We have been meeting for five years now. And we wanted to capture our story on video to celebrate all that God has done in and through us. Our hope is that by capturing this, it will build a sense of faith and expectation for all that God will do in the future. So let's start right at the beginning of the story. The Redeemer story doesn't begin in Colchester. Actually, it began in about 2014 when Claire and I were based down in Kent, where I was on the leadership of the City Church, which was a multi-site church across Canterbury and Whitstable. A few years before the beginnings of Colchester began, we had moved from Canterbury to Whitstable to plant and take on the leadership of their first multi-site there in 2011. And it was in 2014 when we were first asked to consider whether we would move to Colchester and take on the leadership of the church there. At that time, Claire was pregnant with our seconds. We loved what we were doing and we felt responsible for the church in Whitstable. And so we were quite quick to say, no. But as God does, he continued to pursue us and speak to us through various bits of wisdom from other people and through prophetic input and a sense of personal guiding. We began to realize that God was probably speaking to us, but we did love where we were. And so we were a, we were a bit resistant to it, I think it would be fair to say. Um, and so we set aside a day because we knew we had to make a decision because the church there were encouraging us to go and Colchester was waiting and we knew we had to make a decision. So we, we, we set a day aside where we planned to go through all the prophetic words that we had had and spend some time praying and try to come to some form of decision making. I don't know what your recollection was of kind of the lead up to that. Yeah, I think it certainly wasn't expected that we'd be asked to do something like this um, at the time. Um, so our we can honestly say it wasn't our timing and so we were we were we were saying no to start off with but as we came to sit down and talk about it we we found it was just obvious that God was trying to get our attention and there was just certain things that we couldn't ignore and um, so we felt compelled that actually this was was something God was calling us to do yeah I remember that day we we set aside this time and after I it took about 10 minutes just to share the journey so far and all the bits of wisdom we've had and prophetic words and Claire looked at me and she said so what do you think we should do um, and I think my response was I don't think we have a choice we have to go at which point Claire suddenly needed the toilet um, and so she went upstairs and I think she would recall now and saying that was the first time there was like a skip in your step something changed in our hearts in that moment of us saying yes even in our hearts we got excited, I think, in a new way for it for the first time, and faith rose in our hearts. Is that a fair kind of reflection of how you felt? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think so, uh, moving upstairs and coming back down, God just kind of changed my heart and confirmed that yes, what we were thinking was, was right. So, yeah. From there, it was it was just moving forward from that point. So we said yes. We tried to responsibly with our local church leadership, a handover, a church we loved and we cared for deeply. But with a growing excitement, we moved in 2015, April 2015 to Colchester. We moved into our first home. We rented somewhere. We had to rent months before we arrived so that the children could get school places. And the adventure began with us basically in the, around the middle of 2015. Partnering with Relational Mission, with particular support from Morris Nightingale, and Tom Shaw and the team at the City Church in Canterbury who were our sending church. We arrived in Colchester and others began to join us. Mike Luard moved up from Eastbourne. Ben and Mika Parker joined us from Canterbury. And then our first students joined us, Mark Hihiko from Attleborough, 
Rianne Dalrymple, Amy Hawkins and Sammy Miller joined us from Peterborough. The Tar family and the McDonald's were based locally and they also joined us. So we're going to hear from them what it was like in the early days. Well, I remember the excitement of the early days of being Redeemer Church here in Colchester. It was great to be with people in each other's homes, to eat together, to play games, to have fun, to pray, to look at God's Word. Fabulous times of just building new relationships with new people. I really, really enjoyed that and obviously that's grown since then. So what a fabulous start it was and exciting to have a great emphasis on relationships and getting to know one another and growing in God together. Right at the beginning, it was really exciting. Um, there was a lot of things changing, a lot of new people arriving um, and just a lot, uh, a lot of things going on that were really um, exciting and interesting. Um, and it was such a small, uh, close group of people that everything that was happening we were all sort of doing together. Five years ago we were a much smaller community able to fit in a sizeable living room together and really get to know one another really well. Early days at Redeemer were so exciting, lots of fun, it felt like we were on a big adventure. I loved that early, early community stage. I think from that we've seen a lot of uh, the culture that we we hold dear at Redeemer. It came from those early, early days spent um, in each other's homes. Friendship, adventure and a whole lot of fun. It was a really great community and it felt like a family. Hard work and lots and lots of excitement. And fun. <laughs> <laughs> really fun. Exciting, adventurous and a great joy. So those were the very early days of Redeemer. And in the coming years from about 2016, we started to see steady growth in both the depth and the breadth of church life. In 2016, we started to gather together midweek as well as on Sundays in people's homes around Colchester. Fabulous times getting to know one another and new people who had just arrived in Colchester to, to serve with us. In May 2016, we then moved to the Bellevue Social Club. We had red and green velvet seats in the social area and our kids also held the meetings in there. When we had our main meetings together as adults, we were in this room with no windows and it was a rather interesting place, but the atmosphere and the presence of God was so strong among us, it was fantastic. Everybody was putting together, serving the set up and set down and leading worship and preaching, you name it. Everybody was chipping in to make sure that this exciting new adventure would go well. And then we even managed to fit in a little mission trip to Lille in northern France to visit some friends there who are church planting in the relational mission family. That was fantastic to give us a bigger view of what God's doing even beyond Colchester. Exciting times with people pulling together and seeing God at work among us. Twenty seventeen was a year of strengthening, multiplying and maturing. We began developing teams that could carry all that God was calling us to steward. Our midweek groups were multiplying, we established a leadership team and because many of our students and others would be moving on for jobs and things like that, we began developing our capacity for sending. We were deliberate and purposeful about equipping those who'd move on. So nobody ever left, they were always sent well. One of the beautiful things that God began doing, it was very obvious, was he was gathering a beautiful diversity of people in terms of background and gifting. And it was a really exciting time seeking to develop unity amidst that diversity. We began preaching on the foundations of the church and on God's heart towards his church and what it meant to be a radically different community, the people of God in the world, but not of the world. We quickly realised that Bellevue, our first public home as it were, although fantastic and we were hugely fond of it, wasn't going to serve us in terms of what God was calling us to for the next season. So we began looking around all of Colchester for a new place to call home. And in 2017, we moved towards developing an eldership team.
In 2018, we moved out of the building where we had been gathering, which was a cosy and pleasant in some ways place, but it was slightly off the beaten track. It was uh, not quite ideal for what we wanted to do. So we moved to the place where we currently meet, which is a lot more open, airy, spacious, and it's also more visible. So we've had people who've seen that something is going on here at church and have just walked in to find out what's happened. Over the years, God has also added lots of different people from lots of different backgrounds. And some of those have been really well-equipped believers, people who've been able to join us and labour alongside us. Others are people who've drifted from God at some point in the past and come back and encountered him again, which is great to see. We've tried to establish some good foundations over the past few years. We have an eldership team of myself, Hugh, Tom, Al, and that helps to bring a little bit of shape and structure to what we do. And we feel God has really been blessing us and giving us favour, so we have faith for new things to grow. Mika, my lovely wife, uh, started working for the church, doing a lot of administrative things, but helping to build our student work, where God had blessed us with a large number of students. So it's been really exciting to see these foundations that we've been able to lay and where God has blessed us through them. So with a sense of momentum and favour and blessing, we've continued to press on in faith and obedience, anticipating that God has so much more to do in us and through us. Even with the lockdown and the pandemic, we've seen a multiplication and a maturing in church life. With much more going online, we've seen people coming to faith for the first time, partly through Redeemer, and we've seen others becoming aware of their need for God and His help and salvation more than ever before, returning to the faith. What was hugely encouraging is rather than less engagement during the lockdown, there was more, particularly in our life group life. This was a huge sign that us being a real family was genuinely the case as people looked to each other for support and encouragement in their walk with Christ. And so as we look to the future, we trust that sharing the story has fueled your faith. And if you've been part of the journey, whether you've just started it by watching this video, thank you. Thank you for all that you've done. Thank you for all that you've given to redeem a life. And let's continue to press on in faith together to the glory of God as we help people discover life in Jesus, fullness of life, by helping them find and follow Him. Thank you. I just want to say thank you to Mike Lewod who put that uh, video together. He's not here today. So Mike, thank you so much. Um, I just want to say what I said on the video, thank you. There's certain faces that are featured on the video, but that's not how a church is built. You know, I think you can see Jesus builds a church, but it's through the sacrifice of so many people and through people living intentional lives for Christ outside the walls of the church and inviting people in. And the reason we look back, and not just to give you information, when we look back, it's to fuel our faith uh, for the future. Because, uh, you know, you may look and see us a bit established. I tell you what, when we were meeting in our living room, Claire and I thought, is anyone going to come? <laughs> um, you know, what will happen in the next few years? Um, but God's been really kind to us, and I trust He has blessed us, that we have been a great blessing. And so as we look to the future, it feels like we're just getting started. That's an amazing story, but there's so much more to come. And we feel responsible. If God has given us, us to steward, Jesus says he who is faithful with little will be entrusted with much. And so that's our heart, is we want to be faithful with what God has in front of us. And we don't know what the future holds. You know, God writes the story of churches, and God writes the future things. And some of us, we, we don't know what success looks like. Okay? In, in our lives. We just got to be obedient with what's in front of us. And sometimes that's costly and it doesn't feel like success. Other times it looks glamorous. But our, a phrase that we live at with in church life is that obedience is success. No matter what that, might, what, what that might be. And so as we look to the future, and if you're part of Redeemer, you are absolutely part of that. No matter how long you have for it. And I have a dream for the future. I don't know what your dream is. One day I long for a venue that has a soft play. This is just, I'm not saying this is God, this is mine. It has a soft play area where families come in 
And while the children are playing, the parents get given coffee and cake and someone chats to them and they get signposted to Jesus or to a job upskilling or to someone who can counsel them. And then maybe there's an area with showers and rooms where those who have nowhere to clean or to sleep go to. And it's also used as a Sunday venue. And there's an entrepreneurial hub for business people to get trained and equipped so there's income generation and transform society around it. That's the dream I have for the church. And in all of it, Jesus is glorified and people have done good. I don't know if that's what Christ has for us. We will be obedient with what's in front of us. Who knows what the journey might be. But that are the dreams in our hearts. And we are continually looking for a venue. So I'd appreciate your prayers. This venue is getting too small. Our children are going out before the service. We usually have them in for 15 minutes because we think it's helpful and important for them to see us worshiping. We just don't have the space. So we're going to see another venue on Tuesday morning, another hall to hire. So I appreciate your prayers. For that, um, we need to keep looking at we're, we're praying for God, open up a warehouse or a large venue for us, not because the venue is everything, but because it will be a stake in the ground for us to be able to serve the community around us. So please pray for us. So as we look ahead in February and Vision Sunday, we shared that the next season we believe God's calling us to bless our community. And we unpack the acronym BLESS there, which is just that we feel we need to build strong yeah, um, one of our challenges is capacity in the church because we have so many new people you want to figure out what we like first and um, people's lives are busy and the church isn't just the four buildings on a Sunday many of you are being the church out there but it means we're stretched and we don't have you know, kids we, we have over two thirds of our Sunday attendants are under 18s and that takes about two, four, six maybe eight people are out serving the kids and that team serve regularly and diligently so do our tech team every team in church is serving as we try to steward what god has for us so we need to build strong so that we can go along we want to raise leaders in the community and the, you know the city and the town the towns around us evangelistic advance that's exciting so al as one of the elders heads up evangelistic advance so there's a training day a few weeks ago he's gathering a group who will equip people to go out on the streets Serving the poor, Tom Allen, particularly on behalf of the eldership, give us a wave, Tom, give us a wave, Tom is getting us going in that way. We don't want to run too fast, we don't want to go slow, but we need to gather people who can carry that. And then starting and sending, you know, is the answer to us one bigger venue? We think that'll be best at this stage, and the best wisdom we have. But could it be multiple sites around town? Could it be multiple meetings so we make more space for meet more people than come to Jesus? We don't know, but we do know that Ben and Mika are going to the Netherlands next year. So Ben, who featured there, one of our elders, and Mika, who's on staff and a student worker and was leading worship today with the team, we're sending them to be part of a, a cool group of six who are going to plant a church in Nijmegen in Netherlands. I pronounced that absolutely perfectly, I know. Um, and we are seeking to plant into Chelmsford. We don't know what that looked like, but from January, we started monthly prayer meetings in Chelmsford. So if you have a heart for Chelmsford, come and speak to me. We want to keep giving. And we want to keep building strong. The kingdom of God is that he who gives will receive a good measure of press. You don't lose in the kingdom of God. And so we're excited about that. But just as we come to an end, I shared this from Psalm 127. If you've got your Bibles, you might want to turn there. We'll briefly just have a look. I'm just going to look at two verses, really. And what we talked about, in one, Psalm 127, we read this in verse 1 and 2. Unless the Lord builds the house, those who build it labor in... Vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. It is in vain that you rise up early and go late to rest, eating the bread of anxious toil, for he gives to his beloved sleep. I love the message version. So the message version is a translation of the Bible. It's kind of like a poetic retelling, but it's pretty accurate. It says this, if God doesn't build a house, the builders only build shacks. <laughs> If God doesn't guard the city, the night watchman might as well take a nap. It's useless to rise early and go to bed late and work your worried fingers to the bone. Don't you know he enjoys giving rest to those he loves? And so I just want to say, as we continue to build, we give our best efforts. But we are humbly trying to follow God. Because unless he builds the house, it might look flashy. But it's not going to change your life. Um, and so... We endeavor to be obedient to God as best as we have and to exercise faith. And when we say we, I mean us as a church. I've been running a, a, a new believers course on the Thursday night. And we're having a discussion on Thursday night about how people refer to the church. And we're talking about, 
your church. And then we kept catching ourselves and thinking, no, actually it's our church. Can you say our? our. This is your church as much as it's ours. I mean, it's ultimately Jesus. But we express a sense of ownership. And if you're a guest, obviously that might be something that you are trying to work out. The contrast of that verse, if we can just go back to the slide, is this. If the Lord does build the house, we labor fruitfully. If the Lord is watching over it, we watch over it effectively. And so you can read this very negatively, or you can see the positive side of it. And Jesus said what? I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not overcome it. It's a beautiful verse. It's saying that the church is going to advance. We're coming to Christmas, and we love little Christmas readings. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. And who will accomplish this? The zeal of the Lord of hosts. Whatever zeal we have for the kingdom of God fades in comparison with the zeal that the Lord of hosts, the Lord of armies has to build his church, his worldwide gathering of believers. And so as we go into this next season, we will only achieve all that God has for us as we each individually play our part in the church and through the church outside the world. Maybe your part is making your kingdom more business orientated, making your business more kingdom orientated so that you are a blessing in and through it. Maybe it's being more intentional with your neighbours and inviting them to come and have mild wine and mince pies for Christmas, but they get to meet Jesus. Maybe it's serving on a team on a Sunday so that when people come in, they are put at ease and their children are well cared for and taught and they are greeted so that they're in a good place to receive Jesus. Maybe it's raising your children at home with the last ounce of energy you have so that they will grow and follow Jesus in the years to come. Whatever it might be. And maybe you think, I have no measure whether my work is being fruitful. If you are being obedient, you are being successful in the kingdom of God. And so a simple question I want you to take away is God... What do you want me to do as we continue to build together? That's obviously in here, part of it, our togetherness. So the one thing I would like to ask you to do is come to the prayer meeting. So when you want to judge the health of a church, when people ask me how healthy is your church, I think our prayer meetings and our life groups and then our Sunday gatherings. All of that together. Now, not everyone can do that, understand that, but it's not just about the Sunday moment. This is important. It's vital. It's something unique about the presence of God when we gather together and manifest presence of God. But then there's discipleship that's going on day in, day out to help us grow. Because you, we cannot lead people to discover fullness of life if we're not pursuing Jesus into fullness of life. And there's both an individual and a family responsibility to do that. So what is your personal step that you can take? Maybe it's just saying yes again to the very things that you are doing now to say, God, whether it's this church or elsewhere, how can I fully obey? You are building your church. How can I play my part in that? And just as we finish, really, I think everything that we do, my heart is that through it all, everyone is able to say, I'm closer and cherishing Christ more. So I just, I just want to ask, when did you last taste the sweetness of Jesus in you? And just really enjoy Him. Because any deficiency we have for zeal or enthusiasm or mercy or grace isn't primarily fixed by trying harder. It's just primarily fixed by drinking from the fountain of life. No, I'm not found, I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. The Christian life is a life of fruitfulness that is birthed from that. And so, Holy Spirit, I just want to ask in this moment, as we think about our little patch that we have, there are others here from elsewhere and they're trying to work out what you would have them do. I just want to ask in these moments, above all, that as we look back and celebrate what we have, and there's lots of things <laughs> to be fixed, we're aware of that, Lord. We pray that our greatest joy, our greatest energy, our greatest affection and fulfillment comes from knowing you. And in a moment, we're going to come back to worship. But if you've got a communion cup, I just want us to finish. Kind of like a family chat we've had. 
looking to Jesus. So if you don't have a communion cup, just pop your hand up and someone from the hospitality team will bring you one. There's one over here. Just, I wonder if you just pause for a moment, gather your scattered senses to Jesus. If you wouldn't say you're a Christian, or your relationship with Christ right now is a, it's a bit of a wrestle, I just want you, you personally to deliberately invite him to come and speak to you now. So just in a moment we'll break the wafer to remember the body of Christ broke as we'll drink. The wine which we've been seeing about it cleanses us, makes us clean. Lord Jesus, come, please, Lord. I pray in 10 years, Lord, no matter what's happened, whether we've wrestled faithfully and happily seen little, or whether we are in a brand spanking new venue and there's thousands coming, that our story would be the same. That we are more in love with you, more about you, more cherishing of you, more honoring of you more pointing people towards you than we've ever been. Help us to grow up as a church, Lord, in the love of God. Father in heaven, let your kingdom come and your will be done. And just about as I'm praying, there are some amongst us who think, right now the Lord wants to say it wasn't a failure, it was obedience. Don't know what it was. It wasn't a failure, it was obedience. And you know it was, because you honoured God. But there's so many other voices. And there's this strange phrase in Revelation that says of one of the churches, they were faithful with little power. <laughs> Not quite sure what it's getting at, but sometimes we can feel that there's little power. But Jesus delights in our faithfulness. And so, Lord, as we break this wafer, we remember your body broken for us. We had no power to save ourselves. Lord, we were headed down a, a dead-end street, dead, and you took our death on the cross. And we say we remember your story in this church, but we remember your story through history, a faithful God who promised a saviour, a saviour who came, became one of us and took our sin and our death in his body on the cross. Above all, Jesus, we honour you. We honour you. As we come now to drink the wine or the juice and the bloodshed, repeated this every time I've done communion recently because it's living in my heart. I told the scripture that the, the blood of Christ speaks a better word. Amen. Amen. I don't know what words are spoken over your life today. By you, by voices, by whatever track record says. The blood of Jesus speaks a better word. And it says beloved, it says son, it says daughter, it says chosen one, it says one eye of student, and gave my life for. It's a word that says comfort. It's a word that says peace. And be still. It's a better word, Lord. It's a better word. I will remember your bloodshed for the cleansing of our sins. Lord, we, we go again. Yeah. Oh, we do, Lord. We go again. Because you didn't just die, you rose again. Yes. Hallelujah. And we will break bread and we will drink wine until you come again. Because you are coming, because you are alive, because you are ruling, because you are reigning, you are sustaining. Great high priest who lives to make intercession for us, which means that Jesus now is not passively chilling out. He is actively bringing about in your life, in our life, in the world, his purposes accomplished 
on the cross. So when you work in the purposes of God, you're just coming into the slipstream of the almighty Lord of hosts who will have his way. He will never be thwarted. He will never grow weary. He will never grow tired. He will never abdicate. He will never forget. He will never go hard-hearted. He will never lose his mercy and his compassion and his zeal. He will be kind and faithful and strong and true. So we look to you today, Jesus, in the face of the loss of this little baby. Like Abraham and Sarah, <laughs> we look at ourselves and we reckon dead. There's no life in us. But God has said that he will build his church and he will bring hope and life into us. And we trust you in and through the storms, Jesus. And may we, as a rabble of people, bring you glory yes. and we delight your heart in the years to come whatever that you have for us and all God's people said Amen. Amen.